Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I finally got that piece of information that I've been looking for. I've been wondering, when is it that they would sacrifice the red heifer? If you don't know anything about this, just a quick recap. Okay, so the Jews. Uh, there's some of them that want to build the temple as soon as possible. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, they can't, even if they were to build the temple right now, if there was no issues, if they built the temple, they wouldn't be able to actually do any service in the temple because in Judaism, uh, they look to the book of Numbers, which says that you have to have a red heifer in order to uh, purify the Jewish nation from um, uncleanliness, from contact with the dead body. All Jews are considered ritually impure. Uh, since it's not really possible, no, you know, with each individual, have you contacted, had contact with a dead body and, and other things, right? And so, um, basically, there's been all these efforts to produce a red heifer so that they can uh, get the ashes, so that they can purify the priests as well as the Jewish people. And that's the only thing that's really stopping them from actually performing uh, the temple service other than being able to construct the temple itself on the temple mount. So it's a big deal if they're able to get these ashes. And so they've been working really hard at it. They produced some red heifers, and so far they're they're looking pretty good. And um, the last that I checked, and this is the most recent information that I have, I have these uh, groups of red heifers. Like we have these five right here. We have some that were mentioned here. I don't know how many. And then we have this one. And according to these different sources that I have, uh, this is when, in green right here, this is when they'll turn uh, two years old. Two years old in one day. And then they can be used for uh, their ashes. So the first one would have been in September. The next ones would be uh, November through January. And then the last one or ones, I don't know how many there are, uh, would be ready in April sometime. So the question has been, uh, for me, when would they do it? I hadn't seen anything. Um, although some people in the comments had said, oh, it's going to be at Passover, but I, I, I wasn't able to find anything to substantiate that. Well, thanks to Tammy Christensen, uh, she provided me with that source. Hey, Jared, this is a part uh, there. Sorry, there's a part in this article that talks about the sacrifice being planned for Passover 2024. Uh, and then there's a quote from the article and then a YouTube video. And the, the, uh, article basically gets its information from this YouTube video, which is, you, you may have uh, come across these guys before, CBN News. It's like a, a Christian news channel, essentially. And uh, I'll put the link for this video in the description box below. But uh, here you have it. So here you, this is Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo. And uh, I, I guess he's the one that owns the land where the sacrifice would take place. It has to be at a particular spot on the Mount of Olives. It has to be within sight of where the Holy of Holies would be. And he owns it. And let's see. Let's do Control F. And let's do um, uh, Passover. And here it is. Um, Stinson says they plan to invite everyone to the Red Heifer Ceremony that may take place in Passover 2024. Everything is in place, um, down to the, re the red heifers. As long as they stay pure, uh, one of them stays pure, then we have everything in place, including the priests, Mama says. So they are planning it for Passover, as long as nothing changes with these red heifers. So Passover, if we go to the uh, Hebrew calendar, hebcal.com, which shows you our calendar and their calendar together. <coughs> Passover is going to be, uh, it's going to start the evening of the 22nd of April and then go until the evening of the 30th of April. Okay. So it didn't specify in the video what day it would be, but it would be sometime during this week. Okay. Pesach. So that's good to know. There's a lot of things that are kind of um, closing in on April, that are converging on April. I have more to, to talk about with the red heifer, but let's remind ourselves really quick, or if, you knew, if you're new, you may not know these things. 
there's a lot of interesting things that are uh, pointing to April. I'm not saying that the second coming is going to happen in April, but I have no explanation. I don't know. I'll just wait and see. So right now, President Nelson is in his seventh year as president of the church. Every single time there's somebody that doesn't get this, I'm going to explain it. Listen carefully, pause if that's what you need to do, rewind, watch it seven times, maybe seven's a good number, to rewind and watch this. President Nelson became president of the church January 14th, 2018. So if you were to go to him on that day and say, President Nelson, what year are you in? He would say, well, this is my first year as president of the church. And then April 14th, 2019, on that day, you would say, President Nelson, how long have you been president of the church? He would say, well, I've been president for one year. Oh, so what what year are you in now? I'm starting my second year. Okay, Th th that's the key. Stop, stop. This is the part that you need to rewind if you don't understand this. Ordinal and cardinal numbers. Counting numbers and numbers of completion. So, with what I just said, 2018 was his first year. Look, look, I have a visual representation right here. 2018, first year. 2019, second year. 2020, third year. 2021, fourth year. 2022, fifth year. 2023, sixth year. 2024, seventh year. So we're already in his seventh year. Um, and it started January, January 14th of 2024. So you understand? Using that same concept, President Nelson is 99 years old, which means that he is currently progressing through his 100th year of life and will complete his 100 years on September 9th of this year when he turns 100 years old. Does this make sense? Seventh year as president of the church. 100th year of life. He has given 40 talks. 40 is a symbolic number. It's symbolic <coughs> uh, a couple different ways, but the way that I look at it is purification because of the flood of Noah. Uh, it took 40 days, 40 nights to cleanse the earth. Um, Israel had to be cleansed as they were wandering in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. The older generations were not permitted to enter into the promised land because they had too much of too much worldliness, too much Egypt still in them. And the Lord wanted a, a tried and true and tested people to possess the, the promised land. So purification, you understand? Purification, 40 talks. That's if you don't if you don't include the Hosanna Shout um, instructions of April 2020 General Conference. Uh, 111 talks as an apostle. Uh, during conference on April 7th, uh, which will be Sunday of General Conference, he will reach his 40-year anniversary as an apostle, meaning he'll have completed a full 40 years and be entering into his 41st year as president of the church. Uh, this April, um, specifically General Conference, is going to be 20 years since President Oaks gave his talk about the Second Coming, uh, a talk, uh, unlike uh, unlike any other talk that I've seen about the second coming, where he lists all the bullet points and he talks about the numbers of, um, it's it's like one of the few indications that we have that when we're talking about the five wise and five foolish virgins, that it's actually it's not just like a, it doesn't it's not that it doesn't mean anything. He he seemed to indicate that it's going to be something like that, like fifty fifty when it comes to the church, those that are ready and those that are not. Okay, and since that time, and starting in, in 2004, all sorts of things started to take off when it comes to earthquakes and wildfires, but I'm not going to cover that right, right now. I've done it before on the channel, or you can just come to my spreadsheets, go to signs, wildfires, signs, earthquakes, and you'll see what I mean, and also volcanoes. Okay, five years ago, um, the April 2019 General Conference, that's the General Conference where he said, time is running out. He showed Paradise, California. Remember this, uh, what I call bookends. I don't have a better term for it right now. Where at the very beginning of his presidency, there's something that happens. In this case, Paradise, California. 
the next conference, he, he gives the come follow me talk where he says time is running out. He shows a picture of Paradise, California. He reads that scripture from DNC 132 that talks about all contracts, bonds, so on and so far, so so on and so forth are of no effect unless they're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise and unless you're worthy. Okay, so he said that. <clears throat> uh, he mentioned the Chile Concepcion, Concepcion Temple that was dedicated. It was his first temple dedicated as president of the church, and he himself dedicated it. Okay, so Paradise Fire talk. Okay, August 8th. <coughs> sorry, August 8th. 2023, Lahaina, just like paradise, destroyed by fire. And then the next conference, he gives a companion or a parallel or a sister talk to the one that he gave back in 2019. Talks about the same things. Um, uh, he, he quotes the same scripture. And then he ends by announcing a temple in Viña del Mar, Chile. And then a few months after that, that city burns the same way that Lahaina and Paradise did. Vineyard del Mar means vineyard of the sea. The vineyard symbolically burned. Well, and I guess kind of literally. And it's in a region called Valparaiso, which means Valley of Paradise. Okay? So it seems like this, whatever is going on right here, is stopping short of April, as though to point to it. Uh, we also have the eclipse that's coming up. We've been waiting seven years for this. The first eclipse was in 2017. It went over Adam on Diamond, Far West, which was once headquarters of the church, and Independence, Missouri, which is the future headquarters of the church and the site of the New Jerusalem. Uh, we had the one that took place in Utah in October. Uh, let me turn on. Let me turn on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me turn on temples. This one didn't go over Salt Lake City, but... <laughs> Excuse me, it did take the one path that it would have to take to miss as many temples as possible. The only one that it went over that was in operation at the time was the Monticello, Utah temple right here. Manti was in the path of totality, but it was uh, it, it was under renovation and decommission, and I think it still is. So the only operating temple was Monticello, Utah. So very interesting that that happened. And then we have this one that's coming up. That goes over the Sacred Grove, goes over Fayette, where the, where the church was established. Um, it's also going to go over Hiram, Ohio, which was also a headquarters of the church for a time. It's also going to go over uh, Kirtland, Ohio, uh, the Kirtland Temple, the first temple of this dispensation, and where very, very, very important priesthood keys were restored. These eclipses, in my mind, are for us. They are specifically for our church. Other Christians see the significance of this, but not as much as we do, or not as much as we should. The three eclipses make this kind of shape. Some people have said, oh, this is like Aleph, you know, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, not the block script, not the modern block script, but Paleo-Hebrew, other, otherwise known as Phoenician. And there's going to be a similar eclipse. I don't have the paths yet. That are that's going to be like in the 30s sometime that goes over the Red Sea, which in which is an X, and that looks like the the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So you have Aleph and Tav, or in other words, Alpha and Omega, whatever. I'm not really too interested in this right now because I think the second coming is sooner than later. Okay, so we have this that's coming up to complete this series of three. It's going to be the last or the day after general conference. Okay, and then we are also getting into solar maximum at this at this time and it's been a very active um we've had a very active sun i've done videos about all these things taking place on the sun things have been crazy and it's uh the forecast was pushed up to early 2024 so we're basically in it right now on top of that we have um we have this we have this thing that president nelson is doing on his uh social media month by month starting in September, and he started this on the 200th anniversary that the angel Moroni visited with the prophet Joseph Smith. He started doing this thing where, in his social media posts, he'll like list the same word, um, or say like different titles of Christ or names of Christ, and he'll do it in sevens. So in September, he repeated Book of Mormon seven times. In October, it was Think Celestial. It was an excerpt from his talk that he gave from General Conference. In November, it was the personal name of Jesus Christ, whether it was Jesus or Jehovah, his pre-mortal name. 
in December, it was the titles of Christ, the babe of Bethlehem, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, so on and so forth. January, it was the word Marvel. He repeated that seven times. And now the most recent entry for February, and it came out on Valentine's Day, uh, which was also Ash Wednesday, by the way, I just found out. Now that we're like giving significance to Palm Sunday and Holy Week, well, Ash Wednesday, I don't, I don't know what the church thinks about Ash Wednesday, but it essentially is supposed to be the initiation of being of preparing for Holy Week. So this year it coincided with Valentine's. President Nelson did this post and repeated the word love seven times. And so you'll see uh, this has been one, two, three, four, five, six times in a row. And I can only assume, and it is an assumption, that he'll do it a seventh time. And that will probably be the final time. And after that, guess what month it is? April. And April is the month bringing it back around when it seems that one or more of these heifers are going to be sacrificed for their ashes. So there's a lot of things that seem to be pointing toward April. And I'm not making any guarantees. I'm not in a position to do that, but I'm just paying attention. There's nothing wrong with that. Something weird is going on. I don't know what it means. Okay. So I'll put the link for this uh, in the description box below. Here's, I think, the article that she was referring to. She she accidentally put the link for um, this video twice, I believe. But I think this is the article that she's referring to, uh, Forward Jewish Independent Nonprofit, and it talks about what we just talked about. Now, I've never done this before in any of these Red Heifer videos, but I want to go over the actual scripture itself, look at the Institute Student Manual, see what it says, and then go back to some of these articles just to pick out some of the details of what's going on right now. So this whole idea comes from Numbers chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Let's just read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar uh, the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one, one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her, sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight. And uh, with this, I think that they interpret this to mean within sight of the Holy of Holies is my understanding, even though it seems to be talking about Eliezer, but if he's like the high priest, the ma I don't know. But that's why they, they have to do it on the Mount of Olives. It has to be within sight of where the, the Holy of Holies would be. Okay, so uh, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Then the, the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in the water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation." It is a purification for sin. And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even, and it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statute forever. Okay, so what does that mean to us as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? In the student manual, it says, Anciently, an Israelite who had been in the presence of one who died or had been dead was held to be defiled. This, this chapter in Numbers describes the way in which uh, such a person was purified. First, a red heifer was slain, burned, and the ashes laid aside. Then the ashes were placed in pure water, and the mixture sp sprinkled upon those who had been defiled. This was known as the water of separation, since by, by it one was separated or purified from sin. Failure to avail oneself of the cleansing power in this way resulted in being cut off from the congregation. See verse 20. Uh, much vital symbolism can be found in this ordinance. One who defiles himself with sin undergoes a spiritual death and is cut off from God's presence, though uh, through the loss of the Holy Spirit. 
Recovery from spiritual death is often, or sorry, is obtained by faith in Christ's atonement, symbolized by the death of the red heifer, repentance from sin, baptism in water, receiving the Holy Ghost, and obedience to God's commandments. All who thereafter commit uh, certain serious sins and refuse to repent are likewise cut off from the congregation that is excommunicated. Okay, so that's what it that's what it represents to us. Uh, to them, they're obviously gonna maybe have some parallel to that. I don't I don't know exactly, but that's how uh, we should view it. So whenever this happens, uh, I mean he he said that they're inviting everyone to see it. So. I've been wondering, are they going to do it in secret? Because we have uh, we have some articles like this one. Hamas warns red heifers signal a new stage in the Judaization of the mosques on Temple Mount, calls for violence. We've read a couple articles where Hamas uh, was upset about the red heifers, and then another one where Hezbollah uh, is upset about the heifers. So it's not without consequence. And so if they if they successfully do this and it's public it might trigger more violence. It may take things to the next stage in this war. I don't know, but it seems that they're planning on doing it publicly and uh, it will be known publicly once they do it. It also, for me, raises the question, are, are they going to, I mean, they're going to have to like really keep an eye on, on, on security of the event. I'm, I'm sure they'll have the police there and whoever else. I, I don't know. But this is going to be wild once they do it. Um, I don't know. So, anyway, just a few more things. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I, I can't really put my finger on is um, this whole idea of, of how red it has to be and how many hairs. Because I've seen conflicting things. So, for example, uh, let's start with this. Jerusalem Post. From Texas to Israel, red heifers needed for temple arrive. And here's uh, a rabbi going over with a magnifying glass, all, looking at all the hairs and everything, looking for blemishes. The heifers are all under one year old. Uh, that was at the time of this article, of course. And if they remain 100% and avoid any blemishes, which would disqualify them, um, they will each be eligible to be used to create the ashes required for Jewish law to purify those who have been in contact with the dead body, explained the Temple Institute on Monday. This level of purification would uh, be needed in order to allow the Kohanim, or the priests, to carry out their work in a future temple. The prized cattle were immediately transported to Haifa, where they will sit in quarantine for no less than seven days in accordance with the regulations of the Israel Veterinary Authority. After the quarantine... Um, They'll be raised to two separate, sorry, they will be released to two separate locations in Israel, one of which will eventually be open to the public. The heifers will be fed and cared for at these locations until they can be slaughtered and rendered into ashes from their third year onwards. Again, don't get confused by this. This is not saying three years old. It is saying once they have completed two years of life, or in other words, two years old, and they are now in their third year of life. Okay. So, um, this article is saying 100% red. If you go to Israel 365, it says <clears throat> that there can be, there. oh gosh, sorry, lost it once I zoomed in, that there can be no more than two non-red hairs. So, that's different from what the Jerusalem Post said. I don't know. It says here that they have to be two years and one day old. It repeats it down here. It must be two years and one day old, or in other words, entered into their third year. And then if you go to the Temple Institute website, and I guess this would be the most authoritative site because they're the ones that are doing this, um, they say they say this. The heifer must be completely red, meaning there must be no other colored hairs among the red ones. So, okay, so that sounds like 100%. There cannot be any other uh, hairs that are not red, but then they continue. It appears to be, it appears to be that this red color referred to is actually a variety of different shades of red that have been found in cow hair throughout the generations. For example, a brownish red hue that is more red than brown, as well as orange, pink, burgundy, and the like. The Jewish law pertaining to the red heifer hair color requirement is as follows: If the cow has two white or two black hairs next to each other 
it is invalid. So I'm still confused by this, but whatever. Uh, I'm sure that they're going to have a, a, a heifer when it's time. Um, it talks about the fact that Bone Israel, they're the ones that have organized a lot of this. They, they, were, they were the ones that were able to connect with a, a rancher from Texas to produce these red heifers. I believe that they're red Angus. So Bone Israel. Um, and then it says here that they that Bone Israel purchased uh, the location on the Mount of Olives. But in this video, I don't know if they transferred it to this rabbi, but it says that he's the one that owns uh, the place. Him, th This guy right here, he owns where it's supposed to take place. And he's with a different group called, um, where is it? I thought I had it here. It doesn't matter. He's with another group. Yeah, right here. Uh, Uvne Jerusalem. So that you'll, you'll find that there's different like temple groups. You have um, the Temple Institute, you have Uvne uh, Yerus Jerusalem, and you have others as well that I've come across, but I can't remember at the moment. Okay, so they have the, the site uh, already purchased. Here's Bone Israel's uh, website. At first, I thought this was like a Christian group, but it's not. Uh, I don't think. Who is Bone Israel? Bone Israel literally Building Israel is a nonprofit organization focused on building up and reviving important biblical sites, bringing the Bible to life, educating educating the nations about the past, present, and future of Israel, and actively bringing the redemption closer. So, this phrase right here, "bringing the redemption closer," that's that's a Jewish phrase. That's what they refer to um, when they talk about when Messiah comes and initiates the Messianic age or what we would call the millennium. So I think that this is mostly a Jewish group, but they work with, with Christians as well uh, to get things done. So that's basically it. Um, so everything points to April. There's a lot of things that point to April. And uh, like I said, once this happens, <laughs> we're going to have to watch the news. Uh, in Israel, because things could get even more wild when it comes to escalations in this war. It's almost like we have a countdown to April, so we'll just we'll see what happens. Okay, that's going to be for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share, it, and I'll talk to you guys later.